Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. This is an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar looking at advanced audio inside Final Cut Pro 10. In this excerpt, I'll give you an overview of surround sound panning. Now, Final Cut has built into it surround panning. I'm not sure I want to do a surround mix inside Final Cut, but we can definitely do some surround panning. Here's how this works. We'll select our clip, go down to Channel Configurations for Channels, and we'll open all these channels up. Expand Audio Components. Good. Now we'll select this top clip. Notice where the volume and pan sliders are. Volume and pan sliders. These first three choices are designed for stereo clips. Everything else is designed for surround clips. So these are designed to say dialogue. That's where dialogue gets panned or music gets panned or ambience gets panned. I'm just going to set create space because what it does is it opens up the surround panner by clicking that twirl down there. If you've played with Surround Inside Soundtrack, you're going to recognize this panner. The surround panner allows us to position a audio clip in space, 360 degree space, left, right, front, and back. And the way we do that is we grab this dot. If I want to have it go front left, you drag it up toward here and it moves toward the front left speaker. Grab the dot, drag it to the center, it gets centered between the front left and front right. Drag it over to front right, drag it to the rear, drag it way to the rear. In other words, this panner makes it really easy for me to figure out where I'm placing my sound. I want it toward the front, I want it toward the back. So we'll pull it right over there. Grab the second clip, switch that, uh, create space just so I can open up the stereo panner. Pull that over to there. doesn't have to be there, I could move it. There's no magic place to put it. All depends upon what it sounds like. Now, keep in mind that you're going to need the ability to monitor surround sound coming out of your Macintosh, whether that's audio from an HDMI connection or a USB multi-channel output, or if you've got a FireWire device, you can do FireWire multi-channel output, but you're going to need a multi-channel interface connected to your computer. The Macintosh natively with the headset port only supports two channels out. So you're going to need something else. Plus you need five speakers and a subwoofer. Final Cut supports 5.1 surround mixing. Front left, front center, front right, rear right, rear left, and a subwoofer. Now if I scroll down here, notice that we have um, a, a note on subwoofers. There's, a, there's an element called LFE. LFE which stands for low frequency effects is designed to cause theater chairs to rumble. You don't need to worry about LFE at all. All you need to worry about is mixing this so it sounds good. A subwoofer grabs all frequencies of sound that start about 80 to 85 cycles and go below that. So it grabs that. It's got its own built-in crossover network. It grabs all the low frequencies and feeds them out to the subwoofer. The reason we don't really care is deep bass audio is totally non-directional. Your ear does not have the ability to listen and figure out, ah, the bass is coming from front right or front left. It just sort of fills the space. You can't localize it. We can localize high frequency sounds, but not low frequency sounds. Oh, by the way, here's a really cool tip you can use for a party. You know the lowest note on the piano, the one all the way to the left? When that's tuned properly, it has a frequency of 27.5 cycles per second, 27.5. And the lowest frequency that human hearing has generally agreed to have is 20 cycles per second. So it's seven and a half cycles above the deepest frequency the ear can hear. And the highest note, 88 keys to the right, the very highest note that goes plink is 4,186 cycles per second. So a piano goes from 27 and a half to 4,186 and all 88 notes are between those two frequencies. Low frequency effects, the LFE, is designed for very, very specialized functions. All you need to do is worry about giving yourself a clean mix and the subwoofer will strip off the deep bass automatically. By the way, never mix, never mix with a subwoofer unless you know that the subwoofer is going to be how the project plays back. Because if you start to mix for the subwoofer, you're going to find yourself minimizing the bass. And when it's heard on just two speakers, it's going to sound thin and washed out and and kind of light and feathery. You want to you wanna always mix on two good quality monitor speakers. 
This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, taking a look at advanced audio inside Final Cut Pro 10. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you a lot of money. Access all of our training videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. More than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers both Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week and for more information visit larryjordan.biz slash subscriptions. For the complete version of this online training please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store and look for webinar 97.